Welcome back to Curious Archive. This video is the second part of a two-part series exploring the incredible speculative alien world of the Biren. So check out part one if you haven't already. The world of the Biren was first realized by Alex Rees, an exceptional designer and world builder who worked on the video game Subnautica, among other things. And I have links to where you can follow and support him in this video's description. In part one, we broke down the biology and early history of the Biren, a six-limbed sentient alien race at the center of this fictional world. But there's still a lot to cover, which is why, in this entry into the archive, we'll be chronicling the next several thousand eons of Biren history, following their incredible arc into the far future. So let's get started. When we last saw the Biren, their civilization had undergone an apocalyptic reset back to the pre-industrial era due to an event called the Fall, which turned the equatorial region of their planet into an inhospitable wasteland known as the Kiln. This vast, superheated region cut the Biren populations north and south of the area off from one another. And Biren aren't the only species on planet Creera which were affected by the cataclysmic fall. Organisms like the Iridali, a group of unique spear-faced predators that thrived in the tropical oceans, suffered a disastrous population decline as their biome and indeed Indeed, the entire planet turned upside down. But even after the fall, many Buren, though bereft of certain technologies, continue to live relatively average lives. Some populations live as farmers of a plant-like organism called blue stick, essentially returning to agricultural societies. Although the lives of these post-fall blue stick farmers are just a single, small blip in the vast history of the Buren, Alex Reese has mapped out every single aspect of the agricultural practice, making his fictional world feel all the more palpable. This diagram showcases in detail how Buren blue stick agriculture works. The blue stick grows best alongside channels of brackish water, hence the design you see before you. Interestingly, the blue stick can't photosynthesize, but grows symbiotically with a red tinted organism called raft reed to produce energy. Indeed, most of the plants on planet Creera are composites. Here you can see the life cycle of the strange tree within a tree organisms that dot the landscape of blue stick farms. Once again, the level of detail here is impressive. The blue stick plants are preyed upon by the glassworms, a group of small translucent pests. These creatures have evolved a specialized hierarchy and can be divided into queens, soldiers, and workers, much like the complex social structures of ants here on Earth. The glassworms are in turn preyed upon by the chattertails, which are greatly valued by Buren blue stick farmers thanks to their natural pest control capabilities. Their alarming looking mouths are in fact full folded forelimbs used to ensnare prey. When the time is right, these sharp limbs snap forward and ensnare the unlucky glassworms, keeping the blue stick crop safe from harm. Elsewhere on the blue stick farm, we have the thoroughly detailed blue stick mill, a manufacturing structure that uses a large wind turbine to power a mortar. The technology here is based on pre-fall designs, showing that Buren civilization isn't quite starting from square one. The blue stick mill grinds the raw crops into a constant concentrated gel. This processed blue stick is profitable for its medicinal, industrial, and chemical uses, especially now that older industries have all but collapsed. Helping to farm these blue stick fields are groups of giants, the second intelligent race on planet Creera who also suffered a population decline due to the fall. While giants and Biren don't always get along, on this blue stick farm the giants have to work together alongside Biren, as you can see here with this group taking a well-deserved communal break from hard work. And there's something about this image in particular which captures strangely familiar and almost human emotions. But the pre-industrial reset wouldn't last forever. The Biren technology which supported a space-faring civilization, though forgotten and in ruins, was still out there, waiting to be rediscovered. Eventually, global shifts in the post-fall Buren world would reach the blue stick farms. Here, a motorized vehicle from an emerging global power called the Reclamation arrives to assist the laborers in a gesture of goodwill. It's a sign that, after many centuries, the world is being reborn. And over the course of the next era, the rebirth following the fall picked up speed. Eventually, the lethally warmed equator could be navigated once more, with the rediscovery of powered flight. Here, a primitive aircraft called the Kiln Runner flies high over the expanse to avoid the searing heat. 
Crafts like this one helped reconnect the North and South Biran populations for the first time in over a thousand years. In this next image, you can observe two Biran scaling the first mountains, one of the few places on the planet that still possesses frigid temperatures. These explorers are another sign that, long after the fall, the world is finally starting to reconnect. One detail I especially like is their unique suits come with mouth-operated multi-tools, which makes sense since the Buran often use their beaks as well as their front limbs when manipulating objects. In another scene showing the Buran society making impressive strides towards a more technologically advanced civilization, here a reclamation heavy lift delivers a wind turbine to the Buran of a river valley. This image shows that long-forgotten technology is spreading across the planet once more, and the distant populations are reconnected connecting with each other. Like any movement, however, the so-called reclamation is complicated. Many parts of the faction are more interested in empire building than helping to rebuild homes. Indeed, one thing I like about the Buran world is that its history isn't a straight line, but a long road of progress and backsliding. With the mistakes of the first Buran civilization still in many minds, however, overall the Buran species would begin to move towards a better tomorrow. Here you can see a twin-mast reclamation ship hosting along the edge of the Tuktali region, marveling at the ruins along the coastline, which have not been seen for thousands of years. Since the Tuktali region is located deep within the kiln, it would have been inhospitable for quite some time. But now it, like many other cities, are being rediscovered. By now, Buran society is at last entering a second age of scientific advancement. Soon, more egalitarian reclamation efforts would emerge on both sides of the kiln. Here, a Buran plane-like vehicle called the Cresting Wave begins to make its ascent in front of a sustainable, gleaming city, showing that the gloom of the fall is truly lifting. Even more striking, in this image you can see the Buran rediscover rocket technology through reverse engineering ancient pre-fall designs. These rockets aren't as effective as the old ones, but advancements would continue throughout the next several centuries, as Buran technology ultimately advanced even beyond that of their predecessors. Here, at an even later date, we can see the space program has expanded, as a Buran astronaut explores a nearby planet as part of the species' first program to chart the further reaches of the Buran solar system. Considering all the suffering that the Buran society endured, it's a stirring image of all they've overcome. Eventually, it's possible that the Buran would even encounter some future version of humanity. This image is no longer officially canon, according to Alex Reese, but it shows an intriguing possible future where technologically advanced humans in Biran study interactions between babies of both species to gather data for a hypothetical joint colony. Personally, I find this alternate future really intriguing. But perhaps if the Buran ever encounter humanity, it won't be humanity as we know it. In this final, famous image from an unknown point in the Buran's future, we see two Buran meeting an awe-inspiring visitor simply called the Metahuman. Is this powerful being an artificial descendant of humanity, several millennia into the future at a time where our technology has turned us into something we scarcely would recognize? That's certainly my theory, although it's left up to the viewer's interpretation. In the end, it's an enigmatic image purposefully left vague, a story which has yet to be told. The Buran are both a cautionary tale and an uplifting one. The story of a civilization that rose and fell and rose again. If you liked this exploration into their society, I'd encourage you to check out more of the Buran on Alex Reese's own page, as there are extra details on his site, including his creative process behind some of these excellent images. Once again, links are in the description. Like I said in part 1, Alex Reese is also planning to release a book on this incredible world sometime in the future, so stay tuned for that. Also, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support, and like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.